Jurassic World evolution has grown immensely since we last left off. Several new dinosaurs were introduced, including Alorotitan, Troodon, Dreadnoughtus, Cacarodontosaurus, and Iguanodon. It's extremely pleasing for me, who has been making these videos for a while now, to see some of my predictions take fruit and be introduced to the game. Our final video, we explore the ultimate dinosaur continent. Due to the stratigraphy and geology, the North American continent exposes much of the Mesozoic rock formations in its North American cordillera, which includes mountain ranges of the Cascades, the Sierra Nevada, and the Rocky Mountains. This creates the highest density of fossils available to be unearthed anywhere in the world, coupled with growing dinosaur interests coinciding with the American colonization of the Western continent. Resultingly, North America is one of the earliest continents to experience the so-called dinosaur rush, thanks to efforts of early pioneering paleontologists such as Cope, Marsh, Osborne and Brown, and thus has been the most extensive list of dinosaurs by far. This is easily visible in the game, where North America has the highest representation of fossil sites, regardless of how many species overlapping over several dig sites there are. This has been alleviated by Frontier through balancing. No dinosaur in the game has more than 4 appearances total for all worldwide dig sites. As such, we will be following some conditions in the interest of time and reducing over complexity. Firstly, no changes will be made to the vanilla rosters, as Frontier has clearly balanced dinosaur appearances at each particular site, regardless of sacrificing scientific accuracy. Only new dinosaurs that occur at these sites will be suggested. Furthermore, all dinosaurs will be limited to a maximum of 4 dig sites, including newly added ones. This includes vanilla dinosaurs being added to newly introduced dig sites. This is to follow Frontier's trend of not oversaturating the dig site roster with unnecessary additions, such as the ever-presence of Edmontosaurus. With all that out of the way, let us embark on our final journey, our final continent of North America. We start our journey in the south, in the state of Arizona, with the Cayenta Formation. Hailing from the early Jurassic, it is the earliest formation we'll be covering today. This is the site that should have accurately hosted the Dilophosaurus, rather than it being at the dual sites of the Zulu Jing and Lower Lufeng in Asia. Furthermore, it is home to the Sulophysis, which we covered in the Africa video. Unlike Africa, which features the Rodensiensis species, the type taxon Sulophysis bauri and the accompanying Cayentacate species are found here, the more famous and understood variants. Furthermore, I propose the Ghost Ranch site to be added, a late Triassic site in New Mexico famous for its notably remarkable concentration of Sulophysis fossils. Over 1,000 specimens were discovered together in a quarry. Similar to how Iguanodon mine was introduced in the Cretaceous dinosaur pack, to accommodate a second site for a DLC dinosaur introduction, Ghost Ranch is a viable site to singularly accommodate the Coelophysis if it ever gets added. Overlying the Kienta in virtually the same locations, the Navajo Sandstone is a slightly later early Jurassic site. Besides featuring as another scientifically accurate site for the Dilophosaurus, it is also featuring the Cegisaurus, a dinosaur surprisingly ingrained in Jurassic Park lore due to its inclusion in the Jurassic Park brochure. Besides this, Segisaurus is omitted from any other strong reference, lacking any other film or novel or game appearances. Furthermore, it is a poorly understood and unremarkable relative of the Sulophysids, with no skull material being yet found. Not to mention its minuscule size poses problems for a release into Jurassic World Evolution. And with that, we move to the late Jurassic and therefore to the Morrison Formation and its various constituents in the game. The current Morrison Formation is home to most of the Jurassic Dinosaurs, and here we will expand by adding dinosaurs introduced in our Jurassic World Europe video at the Larinia Formation, the Torvosaurus, Dryosaurus, and Supersaurus. Check out that video out for in-depth look at those particular species. Furthermore, the similar niche of Nilia can be interchanged with the Dryosaurus. Do note that in present times, Ophnilia is dubious and better known as Ophnilosaurus. However, here we introduce the Saurophaganax, Allosaurus's larger and probably more fearsome brother, with maximum estimates of his size pushing 14 meters in length, thus larger than even Torvosaurus, Saurophaganax was undoubtedly the king of the Jurassic. However, being uncovered only from the latest sections of the Morrison, as well as contributing to less than 1% of the Jurassic theropod variety at the Morrison, suggests that Saurophaganax was pretty rare, 
and this should be reflected in the game, by only featuring at this particular site and having low percentages of finding fossils. The Morrison Formation in general is already rife with complexity and diversity and thus there are not many other considerations, but we will move on to the constituent sites. Dinosaur National Monument is one of the various outcrops of the Morrison, famous for its wall of bones and diverse sauropod varieties. Torvosaurus and Dryosaurus specimens have also been uncovered here, but otherwise little more change is necessary. Conversely, the Cleveland Lloyd Dinosaur Quarry is famous for its high carnivorous dinosaur count, due to it possibly being a predator trap. Only Torvosaurus is the required addition to its site. Garden Park exhibits less of the famous Morrison species we've grown accustomed to, but was famous for its role in the bone wars of the late 19th century. Alongside Diplodocus and Brachiosaurus should be the Ophnelia, which was originally uncovered at Garden Park. The next dinosaur is a slightly more obscure specimen for the older, more authentic Jurassic Park fans, but steadily rising in popularity due to appearances in recent mobile games. This includes Jurassic World The Game and Jurassic World Alive, the Tanny Colligrius. Depicted as majestic and vibrant, adorning a coat of feathering or fur, Tanny Colligrius is a close relative of the Saurlurosaurs and is believed to be a basal relative to later Tyrannosauroids. Although not making any canon references, its recent rise in popularity may warrant a consideration from Frontier. The dinosaur could also feature at the previous Cleveland Lloyd Quarry, owing to tooth remains found there, although these are still inconclusive. We now move on to a new site, and as one of the richest Morrison outcrops, Como Bluff Ridge in Wyoming was surprisingly excluded from the base game. It features the typical plethora of late Jurassic North American dinosaur variety, coupled with Dryosaurus and Torvosaurus remains. Interestingly, the only specimen of Solurus is found here. Due to similarities, we will equate Onipholestes as interchangeable with this dinosaur. Solurus' lore connection is shaky at best, as it was mentioned multiple times in the first novel, but rather confusingly. Its most damning evidence of existence, however, came earlier last year when the Dinosaur Protection Group released this image, indicating that the Solurus had returned to extinction and thus had to be bred in the first place during the film Law's timeline. Onifalestes, on the other hand, was not referenced here, but in the second Lost World novel, albeit scarcely and only in the opening chapters. Both dinosaurs are very similar and fill similar niches, so adding both is a bit of a wasted slot of a potentially better and more lucrative dinosaur. Finally, Tanny Colligrius can also appear here, since the famous Bone Cabin Quarry is nearby to the Como Bluffs. This ends our analysis for the Jurassic sites. Moving into the early Cretaceous, we head over to the Cloverly Formation, which coincidentally rests on the Morrison Formation. The Cloverly in-game currently features the Sauropelta and Deinonychus, and would be in line to feature one of the Jurassic Park Operation Genesis fan favourites, the Acro Canvasaurus. Immense in popularity due to its extremely unique design, the defining back ridge, Acrocanvasaurus was one of the more expected additions for evolution, even surpassing some more lore reference carnivores such as Suchomimus and Metriocanvasaurus according to some fans. This is probably what hampered it ultimately as there is no reference of Acrocanvasaurus in any novel or film lore. Instead, it does make multiple game appearances. It is quite surprising that such a quintessential carnivore to the continent, dubbed the Spinosaurus of North America, was never in consideration. Acrocanvasaurus would be another large carnivore addition, and its rather immense size for an early Cretaceous predator would mean it was top of the food chain, believed to have been attempted to hunting sauropods. Sauroposeidon was a possible prey, appearing in most of Acrocanvasaurus' fossil range, however I will not consider this on the list as it is too similar to some other titanosaurs in contention, and some already in the game such as Dronautus. I had reservations about introducing this dinosaur, as it is not dissimilar enough from the other iguanodonts already in the game, but it does have more of a canon basis, since it is mentioned in the novel and comics. It was also due an appearance in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, but was ultimately cut from the game. Described as the cow of the early Cretaceous North America, Tenontosaurus is uncovered in many of these formations making up high percentages of fossil material and thus most likely represented the immense grazing herbivore populations on the continent, providing the staple food source of such predators as Deinonychus and Acrocanvasaurus. In fact, 20% of all Tenontosaurus fossils have been found in close proximity to those of Deinonychus. 
Its most distinguishing feature is its relatively long and broad tail, stiffened by tendons, hence giving the dinosaur its name. The much more famous early Cretaceous site is the immense Seda Mountain Formation. It spans a longer geological time frame, plus is rife with more variety and diversity in its fossil specimens. The current vanilla roster of Sauropelta and Deinonychus is further bolstered by the appearances of Acrocanthosaurus and Tenontosaurus, with the latter also appearing in huge numbers here as well. Teleroplates was a notosaurid with similar bodily proportions as its contemporary cousin Sauropelta. Its name is an amalgamation of the Greek words for monster and the ancient phalanx Hoplitae warriors. While its species name references the Zeta Mountain, Interestingly, its questionable existence in Jurassic World canon has been birthed since its skeletal appearances were revealed in the recent Fallen Kingdom movie, appearing in several scenes, including the lava scene and on display in Lockwood Manor. Although not mentioned on any engine files, no first movie references or anything from the Dinosaur Protection Group, its deceased skeleton on Isla Nubla means that it in fact had existed which springs further story arcs and open plot holes that may be answered in the third Jurassic World movie. Although it isn't a distinctive animal due to its close relationship with Sauropelta, and with its appearance too similar to that of Polocanthus, its addition into evolution is regardless undoubtedly now a case of when, not if. Initially classified as a Megaraptoran, the Neovenatorid Seats is an exceptionally large carnivore that represents the youngest allosauroid occurring in North America. Heading from the Cenomanian period, it may indicate that Allosauroids did not yield dominance to the Tyrannosaurs until the late Cretaceous, and that the tyrant lizards were actually living in the shadows of other carnivore groups and blossomed later than previously anticipated. Seats is often depicted as what a realistic Indominus Rex would have looked like, with fearsome claws similar to Megaraptors and an agile build on a lengthy body like the Neovenators. However, much of the upper body including the entire skull is yet unknown, so the animal is still under fierce speculation. In fact, there is some claims it was one of the carnivores which inspired the aesthetic of Malusaurus, an early conceptual predecessor to the Indominus Rex in Jurassic World. However, although Seat represents a rather interesting proposition to the evolution game, it is too speculative scientifically to be taken rather seriously. Utah Raptor is famous for being the largest Dromaeosaur so far discovered, with its size allowing single Utah Raptors to contest even those traditionally more superior. Although it does not exist in the Jurassic Park lore, mainly due to the lack of a need for another Raptor, Utah Raptor has made some decent appearances in Jurassic Park games, most notably Trespasser, usually with its size exaggerated further to differentiate between Velociraptor. This can be exercised as well into the evolution game, allowing a more realistic, hopefully feathered giant raptor to be portrayed. In conclusion, these additions will thus make Center Mountain Formation one of the centerpiece formations in the entire game for unique, highly sought after carnivore varieties. The Lakota Formation in South Dakota is rather obscure and lacks meaningful dinosaur additions but the only real reason this site is added is to feature the dubious notosaur, Hoplitosaurus, which was featured in the Jurassic World Holoscape. Its appearance is speculative, but due to its similarities in bone and armor structure to Polocampus, we can only assume it would also be similar looking. Because of this, it warrants a mention, but is otherwise a poorly understood dinosaur with little interest for many Jurassic World fans, considering there are many other notable and colorsaur varieties more deserving than this not an addition I would encourage. Our final early Cretaceous site is in the tundra of northern Canada, the Clearwater Formation, only recently yielding paleontological finds that were accidentally discovered during oil sand mining. The formation is noted for near-perfect preservation and near-complete articulate specimens of marine reptiles, but quite recently yielded a terrestrial dinosaur. The Barilla Pelta is currently the best preserved dinosaur fossil of its size ever found, featuring a three-dimensional articulated skeleton complete with soft tissue, keratin and overlying skin, which did not exhibit signs of flattening or compression like most other dinosaur fossils. Instead, the dinosaur was believed to have been quickly buried upside down, causing minimal distortion. With soft tissue and skin studies, it was revealed the Barilla Pelta had reddish-brown coloration that countershaded to allow camouflage, one of the first definitive proofs of camouflage usage in Dinosauria. 
As a recent discovery, it thus has no linkage with the Jurassic Park franchise, but its immense popularity would bode well with an addition into the Evolution game. We move into the meat of North America with the Lake Cretaceous sites. We start in the extreme north in Alaska with the Prince Creek Formation. This site was introduced in the Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC as one of two sites to accommodate the new addition of Troodon. Notably, this site extends into the early Paleocene epoch of the Danian Age at 60 million years ago, but that has little relevance to our dinosaur selection today. Instead, many dinosaur lovers would appreciate some reasonable names that have been unearthed here. The Prince Creek Formation is also interesting in that, being so far north, it represented a polar woodland sort of landscape, where mean temperatures were roughly 5 to 6 degrees Celsius, which saw cool summers and frosty winters. And dinosaurs lived here alongside snow throughout some parts of the year. Dromaeosaurus was one of these polar hunters, with several of its remains being found extensively over North America, indicating a hardy species that adapted well. Despite this, it is surprisingly a poorly understood animal compared to its familiar relatives, but it is noted as the very first raptors discovered. Furthermore, it has grown apparent in recent times that the type species Dromaeosaurus albatensis and the most complete species is still substantially rarer than most other small theropods in its environment, especially Troodon. And thus Dromaeosaurus may have extended over an immense continental range, but with a relatively small population due to competition pressure. By far one of the more elegant ceratopsids, and one of the more popular ones outside of the Jurassic Park universe, Pachyrhinosaurus is famous for instead of having a nasal horn, it sported a flat, sturdy boss, making it extremely unique among the Ceratopsians. According to the Dinosaur Protection Group and Engines list, Pachyrhinosaurus was indeed bred and shipped to Isla Nublar. The Arcadia Manifest in Fallen Kingdom confirmed one surviving Pachyrhinosaurus member was captured, indicating that it possibly was part of the first park. With all this lore around it, Pachyrhinosaurus was a frontrunner for a place in the vanilla roster of Jurassic World Evolution, and now it seems a future DLC or free update to introduce this species is imminent. Our first site in the North American Badlands begins in the Northwest with the Canadian Scholar Formation. It is one of the few sites that features the KT event, exhibiting on both sides of the boundary in the Maastrichtian Lake Cretaceous and the Danian Paleocene. No changes here are necessary to this site as we are not changing the vanilla rosters. In southwestern Alberta, we come across the Horseshoe Canyon. Underlying the preceding scholar formation and one of the most productive fossil locations in all of North America. The current in-game roster consists of Edmontosaurus, Chasmosaurus and Carifosaurus, but it is also another site for the Pachyrhinosaurus. This site also encompasses two dinosaurs we have already explored in the Jurassic World Asia, the Onithomimus and Sorolophus. The differences between the Asiatic and American varieties were explained in that respective video. Check it out for more information. Horseshoe Canyon is known for featuring a splendid array of hadrosaur, ceratopsid, and ankylosaur variety. One of the favourites to be added into evolution upon release was Albertosaurus, due to its extensive appearances in other Jurassic Park related games, including Operation Genesis. However, Albertosaurus has so far fallen down the pecking order of popularity due to its perceived lack of uniqueness compared to bigger and better tyrannosaurs but its fame and well understood nature make it an interesting proposition for medium sized tyrannosaur variety. With evidence of pack behaviour, Albertosaurus can be one of the few tyrannosaur species to have higher social and population thresholds. Ultimately however, its lack of substantial lore reference makes it a somewhat unlikely addition in the near future. Edmontonia occurs heavily in the fossil record across the North American Badland sites, and thus is one of the better understood notosaurs. It however has no reference in Jurassic Park lore despite this and thus warrants a mention but its overall hierarchy in the dinosaur priority list is questionable at best due to the fact we already have many ankylosaurs and Edmontonia offers little different. Edmontonia would only appeal to players who wish to see a widespread variety of famous non-lore dinosaurs represented in the game and therefore I will put this as a maybe. On the other hand, one of the more deserving ankylosaurs is Euoplocephalus, which lived alongside Edmontonia for most of its range, though it was sturdier, more armoured, and unlike Edmontonia, sported a tail club. 
Euoplocephalus is perhaps the second most famous Ankylosaur behind Ankylosaurus itself, and is referenced many times in Jurassic Park lore, making multiple novel occurrences and game appearances. A feature on the Dinosaur Protection Group poster indicated its existence in the film lore, but it was never seen on screen and now presumed extinct. Regardless, Euoplocephalus is a dinosaur that is interesting enough, different enough, and referenced enough to make it worthy for an addition into the evolution game in the near future. Eo Triceratops is named because it arrives in the paleontological timeline slightly before the archetype of the group, Triceratops. However, it serves as a sort of misnomer because Eo Triceratops is so far the largest ceratops it ever discovered. And that's about it. For all intents and purposes, Eo Triceratops doesn't really offer any meaningful reasoning other than being on one end of the extreme ceratopsian spectrum. It is noteful, however, that the Triceratops in-game is already slightly exaggerated in size from its real-life counterpart, so Frontier can easily push scientific liberties and make this species a super-sized Ceratopsian. Jurassic Park and Jurassic World have been appreciative of the duck-billed hadrosaurs, providing reasonable screen time to such classics as Parasaurolophus and Carifosaurus, so it is not a dinosaur group that is by any means underrepresented, and there is limited space for newcomers in the evolution game. Hypacrosaurus serves as one of the few contenders that can fulfill this, with a combination of its crest, which resembles a Carifosaurus, although less defined, and its high neural spines, which create a back ridge like Aranosaurus, although that is also not as well defined. Hypacrosaurus can therefore be described as an amalgamation of the two. Quite large for a hadrosaur, Hypacrosaurus was also one of the last remaining ones, existing all the way up to 67 million years ago. By this time, many hadrosaur species had disappeared from the fossil record, especially those of the Lambiosaurine tribe, of which Hypacrosaurus is a part of. As can be seen, Horseshoe Canyon formation offers dramatically much more than what is currently in-game. However, there is only one major carnivore on Earth here, and that is Albertosaurus. In line with Frontier's policy of introducing two sites for new dinosaur additions, as can be seen with Iguanodon, Troodon, and Cacarodontosaurus, I've decided to extend this concept by introducing the Dry Island Bone Bed site, part of the Dry Island Buffalo Jump Provincial Park, and is essentially an outcrop of the Horseshoe Canyon Formation. This site features the famous and important Albertosaurus Bone Bed, which contains the highest fossil concentration of any Cretaceous theropod, and thus a second site for not only that, but the Eo Triceratops as well, which was initially discovered at the Dry Island site. Arguably the richest fossil location in Canada, and possibly even in North America and the world, Dinosaur Park Formation boasts an incredible 58 individual species uncovered. It paints a unique specific time frame of Campania North America, featuring many ceratopsids, ankylosaurs, hadrosaurs and theropods that dominated the landscape over those 1 million years. In-game, Dinosaur Park Formation hosts the Styracosaurus, Pentaceratops, Chasmosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Struthiomimus and Carifosaurus, already a strikingly diverse vanilla roster, but should be further bolstered by a Jurassic World Asia contemporary, Dionyphomimus. Furthermore, the already covered Ankylosaurs from Horseshoe Canyon, Euoplocephalus and the debatable Edmontonia also appear here. Our next two dinosaurs are only slight possibilities for the Ceratopsids, as this group is already well represented in game, and the two species niches have direct counterparts. The first is Centrosaurus, a medium sized Ceratopsian with no Jurassic Park lore, but popular with the dinosaur community due to it being the archetype for the Centrosaurinae subfamily. Characterized by well developed nasal horns and smaller but much more elaborate head frills, Centrosaurus is very similar, however, to the current Styracosaurus and will not offer much better. Mercury Ceratops, on the other hand, is similar to Chasmosaurus, part of the same Chasmosaurinae subfamily that are known for extra nursely large frills, often ornate, and well developed brow horns that allow most Chasmosaurines to feature at least three face horns. Mercury Ceratops is named after the Roman deity Mercury, as its neck shield resembles the winged helmet of the messenger god. However, like Centrosaurus, Mercury Ceratops has no semblance in the Jurassic Park lore and thus is of little canon value and therefore unlikely. If Tyrannosaurus dominated the Maastrichtian age, then Dasplitosaurus devastated the Campanian, becoming by far the largest apex predator of its time and range. Although it shared its habitat with the slightly smaller Gorgosaurus, 
It was built to utilize sheer power with its robust build and proportionally larger skulls, inflicting crushing bites after a short burst of pace, usually from ambush positions. The Splitosaurus is a more basal relative of the Tyrannosaurinae clan, possible ancestors of the later Maastrichtian Tyrannosaurus rex. In game, the Splitosaurus would have been one of the larger medium tier theropods, not quite rivaling the 10 meter plus marks of the large carnivores, and thus a niche does exist for it in the game. The Splitosaurus' counterpart was Gorgosaurus. In order to compete in its environment, Gorgosaurus, at a slightly smaller size than the former, was built to be more agile and speedy, with a proportionally smaller skull probably used for snapping at targets and wearing them down in an attrition hunt. It's thus easy to see the niche differentiation between the two that allowed each other to flourish. The Splitosaurus could target the more armored ceratopsids and encarlosaurs, using its sheer crushing power to deliver the decisive blows, whereas Gorgosaurus could target the faster but less defensive hadrosaurs that could otherwise outrun and outtire at the Splitosaurus in an extended sprint. Both Tyrannosaurs are non-existent in Jurassic Park lore, though Gorgosaurus has made recent game appearances in Jurassic World Alive. Lambiosaurus is another hadrosaur that, despite the game's overwhelming variety already, deserves a mention and maybe even a greater consideration for future release. Lambiosaurus' most striking feature is its distinctive and ornate crest, featuring two designs, the Magni Cristatus species mounts an overloid, more exaggerated version of the Crethosaurus crest, whilst the type Lambi species carries the more famous hatchet-shaped crest. I would definitely prefer the latter, and it defines the Lambiosaurus genus, but both crests are still different enough from what is offered in the game currently. By far the most distinctive hadrosaur on our list, Lambiosaurus is an appreciated candidate for duckbill herbivore variety. Going briefly over this dinosaur, Panoplosaurus is an extensively armoured nodosaur, even for nodosaur standards. It was supposedly due to feature in Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, with remnants of its files appearing on the CD-ROM, but ultimately cut like a dozen other species. Nevertheless, I see little reason to digress over this rather uninteresting candidate. These two are interchangeable for another Pachycephalosaur candidate, Stegoceras and Gravipholus. Both dinosaurs are extremely similar with each other, with many paleontologists considering Gravipholus synonymous with Stegoceras, and indeed this debate still continues. Gravipholus, however, was mentioned once in the Lost World novel, when the Richard Levine character was attempting to identify the herd of Pachycephalosaurus. Stegoceras is the more famous and more preferred specimen as it is more well studied but both are equally outshined and represented by the vanilla dinosaurs already in the game, such as Dracorex and Stigimolop, so their introduction and even their consideration is extremely unlikely. Dinosaur Park formation with all these additions would represent the most dense diversity site in the entire game and rightfully put it as THE Dinosaur Park in the dig site roster. The final Canadian site is the Frenchman Formation, which occurs at the final stages of the Maastrichtian Lake Cretaceous, and thus showcasing most of the iconic North American dinosaurs that lived until the KT extinction event. However, in-game only the Dracorex, Taurosaurus and Tyrannosaurus are represented, and warrants no further changes. As we enter into the United States, before we continue with the Badlands, special mention to this particular site in New Jersey, called Hadrosaurus Park. Quite obviously, this site exhibits the only found specimen of Hadrosaurus, unearthed from Campanian rocks of the Woodbury Formation in 1858, thus becoming the first dinosaur to be discovered in the North American continent. With only a handful of bones eventually assembled, Hadrosaurus's knowledge is still a bit murky, but it did pave the way to the greater understanding of its namesake group, when many of its relatives would be later uncovered. Despite all this, Hadrosaurus has a surprisingly fruitful connection to Jurassic Park lore. In the novel, a Hadrosaurus herd was observed by Alan Grant and the kids, stampeding in their direction before the Tyrannosaurus attack. This was later replaced with Gallimimus in the film due to the fact it reached high speeds. Furthermore, Hadrosaurus appears again in the film lore with an appearance on the Jurassic World Holoscape, fueling speculation it was part of the Isla Nublar exhibition in 2015. Although its breeding and incubation in the film lore is questioned, it was undoubtedly a canon dinosaur in the novel. However, in current retrospect, Hadrosaurus would hold little value with the Jurassic Park fanbase who wish to see other, more interesting Hadrosaurs be represented in the game. 
Returning to the USA Badlands, we begin in extreme northwest with the Egg Mountain site, part of the greater two medicine formation that formed during the Campanian Age. This formation is heavily exhaustive with paleofauna, and as a result, in the interest of complexity and respecting the singular Egg Mountain site, we will only consider dinosaurs found in this immediate vicinity, also known as the Chateau Bynum area. In game, the Egg Mountain site is home to the Myasaura. The Trawdon is also found here but was surprisingly omitted, maybe Frontier wanted separate sites. Hypacrosaurus, the Splitosaurus, and Gorgosaurus also make return appearances. A close relative of Pachyrhinosaurus, Eniosaurus is another extremely unique ceratopsid due to its forward curving horn. Eniosaurus earned its nickname from its comparisons to modern day bison and buffalo, roaming North America in huge herds. The fact it was discovered in a single species bone bed with various individuals suggested they died together in a short period of time, reinforcing the evidence for herding. Eniosaurus was present in some concept art for Fallen Kingdom but never reached any substantial stage in the later development cycle, thus therefore has no lore connection. It is however present in Jurassic World the game and Jurassic World Alive, so it has some reputation with the newer mobile gaming crowd and is thus of relatively decent popularity. Judith River Formation was added recently in the Secrets of Dr. Wu DLC, the second site to accommodate the Trawdon. Operation Genesis fans will remember this site, making an anticipated return from its omission in the base evolution game. Judith River is therefore decent with variety, featuring also Dromaeosaurus, Edmontonia, Lambiosaurus, and the borderline Mercuriceratops. It is however particularly rich in Ceratopsian varieties. One of these is the Medusa Ceratops, so called because of an allusion to its snake-like spikes emanating from its frill. However, Medusa Ceratops is another promising candidate in a sea of interesting Ceratopsian candidates, and its lack of Jurassic Park connection will ultimately hinder any possibility of an appearance. Likewise, Spike Lapius is also rather interesting, sporting a pair of top frill horns that notch forward in a sort of a roll shape. Yet with the crowded roster of current Ceratopsians in the game, Spike Lipeus will also struggle to see in-game representation. These two dinosaurs are also pushed further down the pecking order by more recent lore-entwined Ceratopsians we will cover soon. Another returning site from Operation Genesis, Hell Creek is intensively studied and well-renowned for showcasing the last million years or so of dinosaur existence in Montana. As such, it features many of the core continental favourites, such as Triceratops and Tri Tyrannosaurus, and these are reflected in the vanilla roster. The famous Tyrannosaurus Sioux was also unearthed from this formation. The North American species of Anuphomimus velox also appear here. Check out the Jurassic World Asia video for more information. The only other dinosaur present at this formation worth considering is the Dakota Raptor, a large sized Dromaeosaur that is slightly smaller than the Utah Raptor. It is almost equally as famous, however, due to the fact the Dakota Raptor lived in the late Cretaceous rather than Utahraptor, and thus is the informal North American Velociraptor substitute. Furthermore, the Dakotaraptor currently is the most accurate Dromaeosaur in size to the film Velociraptors, standing about as tall as an average human and with a typical agile Dromaeosaur build. It was also believed the Dakotaraptor's size allowed it to compete with sub-adult Tyrannosaurs for the medium prey niche. The Dakotaraptor's evidence of quill knobs suggests it had long arm feathering indicating wings, and although too large to fly, the Dakotaraptor could have used these for elaborate displays or to help balance itself while pinning down prey. The Dakotaraptor would be a welcome addition, but since Hell Creek is already well fleshed out in the game, there is little more worth considering. The Lance Formation is roughly equivalent in time period in Paleofauna to the aforementioned Hell Creek Formation. Although in reality not as rich and productive as the Hell Creek, Lance Formation has the largest vanilla roster in the game, a whopping 9 dinosaur species. This site already exceeds its real life counterpart and thus no changes are necessary. Often considered as a sister site to the Lance Formation due to proximity in location, age and comparable paleofauna, the Laramie is surprisingly disappointing in dinosaur selections, only featuring Styracosaurus and Taurosaurus. Since we are not making any changes to vanilla roster, no changes will occur here. The P Sandstone member, an obscure member of the Frontier Formation that houses the Notosaurus in-game. Again, no changes here are necessary. 
A new addition to our dig site roster is the Grand Staircase, more formally known as the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, an extensive sequence of rock formations that includes the dinosaur-rich Kaiparowitz and Wawit Formation. These formations date to the Campanian Age and feature a plethora of interesting species, but also many that have recently been connected with Jurassic Park. Firstly, the Parasaurolophus should be added here, as it has been discovered recently in decent numbers, with several new species attached to the genus. We start with our new additions with another low possibility candidate, the Diabloceratops. Named for its intriguing devil-like horn growths, Diabloceratops is the oldest known centrosaurine dinosaur, and is only known from incomplete skulls. It did however gain recent fame in the Jurassic World evolution community thanks to Steam Blast's wonderful model edit of the Pentaceratops. Diabloceratops is otherwise of little other interest due to lack of lore connection and thus is a very low possibility of addition. However, a Ceratopsian with established lore connection is Cosmoceratops, sporting the most ornate skull of any dinosaur. Cosmoceratops skeleton was also featured in Fallen Kingdom as one of the various displays in the Lockwood Manor House and thus it can be inferred an indirect specimen of the Jurassic Park universe. It is one of the smaller Ceratopsians and not greatly indifferent from in-game species such as Chasmosaurus, but its chance of appearing in the game is admittedly now very high. Lifronax has the accredited position for being the earliest true Tyrannosaur discovered, occupying the predatory niche around 80 million years ago, at a time around the early Campanian Age when Tyrannosaurs in general began to make their mark on the American continent, before eventually becoming the dominant predators for the next 15 million years or so. Lithronax has no connection to Jurassic Park, but it has recently grown in popularity due to its fe featuring with feathering in Jurassic World Alive, a decision which has seen widespread acclamation. Although it's unlikely we will see feathered tyrannosaurs in evolution anytime soon, Lithronax is another option for a small to medium sized tyrannosaur, although it may have to compete with the likes of the previously explored Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. In reference to the Greek bent sword Machairus, the Machairoceratops is another extremely unique Ceratopsian, and a contemporary to Diabloceratops and the predator Lifronax. Once again, this dinosaur lacks Jurassic Park references and therefore its likelihood of introduction into Jurassic World evolution is extremely unlikely, but its uniqueness and ornateness of its frill design, dare I say more unique than that of Cosmoceratops, deserves a strong consideration. And here's another unique Ceratopsian. Nasutoceratops references its rather large nose, which in fact is filled with air sockets making its pneumatic nasal structure a unique trait among the Ceratopsian family. Nasutoceratops also sports two curved horns that resemble those of modern cattle, giving it a very cow-like or bison-like appearance. Although lacking any connection to the Jurassic Park universe like Makaroceratops, it did however make some mobile game appearances, but these shouldn't be evaluated as strong references. The Pseudoceratops should be considered instead for its uniqueness. Teratophonius may come as a surprising candidate on this list, as it is a recent Tyrannosaur found at the Grand Staircase in 2011. As Lifronax dominated the early Campanian Wawit Formation, Teratophonius did the same in the middle Campanian Kaparowitz Formation as one of the early Tyrannosaurs. Although the 2011 specimen was a subadult, a 2017 specimen uncovered revealed better adult estimates reaching 8 meters in length, but it was clear Teratophonius was not a stocky predator, more agile and developed for speed. Quite importantly, it was featured multiple times in Fallen Kingdom, firstly as a carcass on Isla Nubla, then as a skeleton in the Lockwood Manor. This has serious implications for the place of this dinosaur in the universe, indicating it may have been bred or transported to the island after 2015. Teratophonius is now thus a very likely candidate for inclusion due to strong film lore connection and it would offer a medium sized tyrannosaur with light and the speedy frame into the game. The new proposed Grand Staircase site is filled with strong Ceratopsian variety coupled with two great tyrannosaur candidates. The combination of the Kaparowitz and the Wawit formation also offer many intriguing canon reference dinosaurs that may soon grace the evolution game in upcoming DLCs. Into New Mexico with the Campanian Age Kirtland Formation, forming a sister ship with the underlying Fruitland Formation, these two sites showcase extreme detail and similarities over a 2 million year period in southwestern USA, and as a result we will consider dinosaur fauna from these two sites together. 
The Kirtland is currently home to the Pentaceratops and Parasaurolophus, and can be further bolstered by dubious Onyphomimus remains and the previously mentioned possibility of Stegoceras. Often confusingly cited as part of the Kirtland formation, but current consensus agrees Alamosaurus is part of the Maastrichtian Ojo Alamo formation, which overlies the Kirtland and outcrops locally. Alamosaurus was a supermassive titanosaur that dominated southern North America all the way until the KT extinction event, becoming one of the last surviving sauropods. Alamosaurus was slightly shorter and less in weight than Argentinosaurus, but it was by far one of the dominant sauropods on a continent that really lacked them. Alamosaurus has a surprisingly interesting connection to the Jurassic Park film universe, commonly cited as a skeleton inside the Jurassic Park Visitor Center in the movie that was later destroyed by the Tyrannosaurus. It is therefore an indirect part of the JP universe, quite like Cosmoceratops' case. Although this does not indicate anything about it being incubated by Injun, it is a nice piece of trivial information that may see it introduced into the game in the near future. A close relative of the contemporary Pentaceratops, Titanoceratops is known for adorning the longest skull of any terrestrial vertebrate. Due to the sheer size of its skull, it is believed Titanoceratops was extraordinarily weighty, reaching the tonnages of Triceratops and Taurosaurus despite being of a smaller overall body size. Nevertheless, it has no connection with Jurassic Park and therefore is of little interest besides an acknowledgement. We have reached our final site for today's video. The Aguya Formation is a Campanian Maastrichtian age site that outcrops in Texas and Mexico and is fairly extensive in showcasing southern USA and Central American dinosaur species of the late Cretaceous. Indeterminate Chasmosaurus fossils appear here, followed by two unnamed species of the Edmontonia and Euoplocephalus genus. Alamosaurus also appears in this locality, but it is from the overlying Javelina Formation. Finally, indeterminate Troodon and Dromaeosaurus fossils also appear here. We have one more fairly important species here, and that is the Aguyoceratops. Originally labelled as a new Chasmosaurus species from the various specimens that were unearthed here, Aguyoceratops was deemed different enough to warrant a new genus. Adorning strikingly pronounced bro horns, Aguyoceratops skull was featured in the Lockwood Manor in Fallen Kingdom before, spoiler alert, contributing to the empowerment of the Indoraptor death scene. Although related to Chasmosaurus and Pentaceratops, it was probably not an ancestor of either due to its shorter frill, and its overall design is too similar to even Triceratops or Taurosaurus to be greatly admired. It is however extremely entwined in Jurassic World lore currently, and thus it may have higher than average possibilities of being introduced in Jurassic World Evolution. In conclusion, this site allows access to some standard North American core dinosaurs, but otherwise is of little interest. It is required, however, to introduce the Aguyoceratops, which is now considered fairly important in the Jurassic World lore. That ends the Jurassic World North America dinosaur speculation video. As always, although my list is quite exhaustive, I've made an effort to reference some famous dinosaurs and those that have connections with Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, but any others that you would like to see represented from this continent. The finishing of this video means we have come to the conclusion of the Continental DLC series, and that begs the question, what is next? I will be putting up a poll soon on which new DLC content you guys might enjoy me analyse, whether that be marine reptiles, flying reptiles, Permian species or even Cenozoic mammals. Stay tuned. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe for future content. I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. If you enjoy my content and wish to support me further, check out my Patreon link in the description.